Hello and welcome guys. We are back here for round two with the list that you see on screen. If you're interested in the details about the deck and why I'm playing Filthy Gemstone Mine over the second Vesuva, unbelievable. Um, you can go ahead and check out all those details in match one. Gotta move this explosives back to where it's supposed to be. Otherwise, we can't move on and we can't continue like this. Um, but yeah, anyways... I uh, have nothing else to say. I just want to jump into the games, and so I'll see you there. And here we are. We have found a match. Can we be on the play again? Really? I mean, I'm not going to question uh, luck, but... And this hand is quite excellent, I might say. Yeah, this is a snap keep. It's a turn three Titan, sadly, because of the fact that we cannot get our amulet out on turn one. Man, what a shame. Now we're going to be so much slower. Hopefully our opponent's playing something uninteractive. Uninteractive. Oh, Scalding Tarn means that's pretty unlikely. I suppose this could be Storm. Uh, let's play an amulet, for sure. Um, we could play... Sanctuary and go ahead and explore here, and then still be ha be able to have growth chamber during this upcoming turn. Uh, we could also play ghost quarter and amulet and hold up the explore so we can explore next turn if we want to. Uh, I don't know if it makes a huge difference here. I suppose. Well, if we if we play explore into ghost quarter, then we'll have an additional mana of the white variety, so we don't have to get a bounce land. So I guess that's going to be a better move. Uh, we'll, we'll do it off this growth chamber, I think. So uh, We do not want to yield the amulet triggers here, since we will have a second one in play quite shortly. And we'll explore here. Gemstone mine is interesting. Uh, let's go ahead and get this ghost quarter out there, I suppose. And here's the second amulet, and we will pass it back to them. I am kind of operating under the assumption that this is Storm, but it really could be very many things, so. Shock Stevens. Opt, okay. Still could be Storm. Could be some sort of blue-red or even potentially Jeskai control deck. Don't think really that Grixis would be playing Opt, most likely. A Braid? Unbelievable. That's actually pretty crazy. Um, So, especially with a card like A Braid coming through. Well, I mean... Uh, since we already use our Explorer, we can't Stirrings to try to find the third amulet. We could play Gemstone Mine and Transmute Tolari West for Cavern. Or we actually have a mainboard Pact of Negation, now I'm thinking about it, so... I'm going to go ahead and transmute for the Pact. And we'll see if we can get our Titan rolled up for this upcoming turn. Luckily, they are a land away from being able to snap a Braid, our other amulet. So I think this is going to be our most beneficial line. We will be putting our poor Gemstone Mine down to one counter left, but... Eh. That can be dealt with. We see Polluted Delta. So this is definitely some sort of blue-red deck. Uh, yeah, let's just, uh, let's just do it. We'll see uh, how willing I am to Pact of Negation, something like a Remand. Which I'm fairly certain they will have access to. Let's make a green mana. And here... So it's unclear whether we want to pick up the Gemstone Mine or not. The Gemstone Mine represents a second blue for our Pact Indigation. And we also may need the Bounce Land for future shenanigans. Although since we don't have the second amulet, the Bounce Land doesn't represent that much help. I'm going to go ahead and pick up the Ghost Quarter here, I think. And we'll jam this Titan. And if there's a Remand, we may Pact it, we may not. We'll just have to see what they have. They've got a fetch polluted delta. Okay, okay. 
If this is an Archmage's Charm, we're almost certainly pacting. They could have a Force of Negation, but... I mean, that doesn't really punish us that bad. If they Force of Negation our Pact of Negation, then... We just got three cards out of their hand for our single Primeval Titan. Okay. <laughs> well, that was that was easy. We are most definitely attacking with our Titan this turn. Uh... And now we just have to make sure we don't die to Cryptic Command. So we need to get at least one more blue source, if not two, so we can play around. Nah, there's no reason to get a second one, actually. But So we'll pick up the Stronghold here. We'll swing, and we'll get Breeding Pool so we can cast our Ancient Stirrings, and I guess Tolari West, perhaps? Uh, we could also get a Bounce Land plus Tolari West. That might be better. Let's do Tolari West plus a green bounce land, and we'll go with the Gruel Turf, I suppose. Yeah, that's fine. Definitely not picking up the Tolari West here. Uh, let's pick up the Boros Garrison, I suppose. And now we'll cast the Stirrings, and we'll see what we see. <laughs> There's the third amulet. I don't know how interested I am in that one. Kind of want the Simic Growth Chamber instead. I don't think it matters. We'll pick, we'll pick the Growth Chamber. Why not? And we can pass it back to them. So we are not dying to a Cryptic Command. I guess we could die to a Blood Moon. Well, let's just hope that they don't have that. In game one, it might be pretty unlikely that they have a Blood Moon. They could be opting here to try to find a Blood Moon as well. Yeah, I didn't consider Blood Moon at all. If we win this game and they're playing mainboard Blood Moons, then we might have just gotten lucky there. Maybe that was a bit of a ballsy play. I mean, Archmage's Charm was going to permanently counter our Titan anyways, though. This is the ugliest assortment of cards I have ever seen. Not in this particular sorting. No way. Converted mana cost. That's what I like to see. Okay, so because of the way that they played that game, I think they do have access to Blood Moon, so I'm going to bring in all of our answers to Blood Moon. Uh, no reason to lose to that one. Beast Within also hitting Ash Yawk is quite relevant. We can have these Baylos, I think, because it keeps our life total nice and high if they're trying to Bolt Snap Bolt us out. Aethergust hits Blood Moon, and that's about it. They might have some red... Permanents like Kiki Jiki, perhaps, uh, or like Rowl, or Crackling Drake, or even like Young Pyromancer. I could see uh, get Gust being good, but regardless, uh, I think I'll leave it for now. We'll bring in the Disputes, and maybe a couple Dismembers wouldn't be bad either. They've got to be playing some type of creature. So we'll bring in the Dismembers, and they can definitely be cut if it's not something that'll be relevant. We can trim at least one pack, if not two. I'm fairly certain they're on a Blood Moon deck, so I would rather not get caught needing to pay for a Summoner's Pact than being unable. Um, these Stirrings are going to be a bit redundant. Although they do find Basic Forest, which could be relevant. Um, let's see, what else? Trackers are good. How do we have to cut so many cards? Maybe we don't want these Dismembers. <laughs> Explorer is going to be pretty good, probably. We can trim a Grazer. Uh... What else? Azusa dies to a bolt. Maybe an explorer. Not sure. We'll trim the explosives, I suppose. And one other card. I guess a sanctuary is not the worst thing to trim. If we're trimming a bounce land, though, we may want to consider keeping the stirrings, because that way we can find our bounce land or our basic lands. Uh, I'm going to trim one Explorer for Stirrings and one Grazer for Stirrings, I think. Actually, maybe it's better to have Explorer than it is to have Grazer. How crazy is that? Let's, let's try that. I like drawing cards. Do you like drawing cards? You probably do. Yeah, our opponent is probably like, man, they were just showing no respect for Blood Moon in Game 1 whatsoever. What a boss. 
Speaking of being a boss, this hand is uh, quite good. Hopefully we don't get our amulet spell pierced or something crazy like that. Still don't know what our opponent is planning on winning with. It could even be, like, through the breach. I saw a recent list in the 5 O's, or maybe it was a challenger thing. I don't, I don't remember. It was some, some deck list that was winning with through the breach Emrakul, which is, I say that as if it's a new thing. It's really not. It's, it's been around, but it is a thing that exists. Sadly, because we did not have a forest on turn one, we can't cast Bailoth this upcoming turn because we could have gone Grazer into double bounce land to be able to cast Bailoth, but it's all good. We'll just draw a three drop to completely reward us anyways. Oh, okay, maybe not. Maybe not. So let's go ahead and get this growth chamber out there. And I guess we're going to go ahead and cast Ancient Stirrings to try to find... A basic forest is probably going to be our best choice. That way we can summon his pack for a Rex Sage. Right. Might as well float the mana. We could Grazer here. We could also pack for a Dryad and put it into play. That doesn't really help us at all. Well, we put Dryad into play. Then we play the Stronghold. Use it for a green and play Grazer to get a bounce line into play. But then we just lose to... Like a Blood Moon or a Stone Rain or something. I guess that's not going to be worth it. Let's go ahead and just Stirrings here. They force our Stirrings. Okay. Uh, we'll pass. It's a little hasty. It's an odd one to force. I guess they drew it because they would otherwise probably have forced our turn one amulet. Now we can play a second amulet and play Bounce Land into Bailoth, potentially. Or we could second amulet Grazer into Summoner's Pack for Titaning cast it, I think. On three cards, though, they probably have something like Archmage's Charm. Am I interested in losing a land drop here just to put a Bailoth in play? I don't think so. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to play the Stronghold. I'm going to use it to play Amulet. This way, where our second Amulet plays around a Spell Pierce. Then regardless of whether this resolves or not, we can choose to play Grazer if we decide to, and if not, then, like, whatever. I guess they could Archimedes Charm to steal this Amulet, or just hard cast the Force Negation. That is really aggressive. I don't know if I like that at all. We'll pass it back. Now we have five, uh, up to six mana with our Grazer, so we can actually cast a Titan this upcoming turn if we really wanted to. What do they got here? Archimedes Charm to steal this? Yep. Okay. Not ideal, but not the worst. And we drew a basic forest to punish that play, just so that we can immediately get this obstinate bail off straight to the battlefield. Love it. Love it. I wonder how much work a single Obstinate Bailoth can do against them. I guess they're just trying to survive long enough to through the Breach us, perhaps. Mystic Sanctuary, putting Archmage's Charm on top. Yep. Okay. And perhaps an end of turn opt to get it back immediately. No, just drawing it. Archmage's Charm doesn't really help them against our Obstinate Bailoth at the moment. I'm going to draw two cards immediately. I guess they're trying to hit these land drops and find their combo pieces. I'm going to go ahead and assume that they're on through the breach based on this play pattern because that's the only reason why they'd be gunning so hard for a fifth land, I think. If we draw another amulet, then we can play it, play Grazer, and be able to tighten this upcoming turn. I don't really foresee that happening, but it is possible. Magmatic Sinkhole. It's not one that you see every day. Okay. Explore is fantastic here. Let's go ahead and cast that one. Ancient Stirrings. Do I want to do that or play a Grazer? I guess I want to play a Grazer. Eh, that might have been wrong. I haven't been paying attention to how many land offs we have. It might actually be possible for us to 
stirrings anyways. Yeah, it is. Okay. No problem, no problem. We do want to see if we can find another basic forest here. There's a lot of different choices. Um, I guess Garenbrig is might be the best so that we can have a minimum number of permanents that will allow us to play a Titan if they do have Through the Breach. We could also Bajuka Bog to exile their yard so they can't get back a Force Negation, but we can't do that this turn. Uh, not Force Negation. I was thinking Archmage's Charm. Force doesn't matter all that terribly much at the moment. Gemstone Mine would allow us to activate Stronghold. I don't know how useful that is, though. I'm going to go with the Bog. I think it's the most overall useful. Oh, we can play it this turn. Wow. <laughs> well, let's do that. Well, that's great. And now we'll pass it back to them, and we'll see what's going on. I could have sworn we used all of our land drops. I don't know. I was, like I said, I was not keeping track at all. Serum Visions. Okay. We might actually want to Summoner's Pack up their instep for we to have three available. That would allow us to play a Dryad or a Zusa if we top decked it. That might be a little too fast, though. Yeah, I'm going to pass on it for now. There's no real reason to do that. We need to make sure we have something that can punish them for tapping on their instep before we go and make a play like that. So let's play this Growth Chamber so we can potentially transmute a Tolari West if we draw it. And uh, we'll pass. I mean, we're not really clocking them if they are trying to through the breach us, but... I mean, our hands aren't really built for us to just jam a Titan. Like, if they have the combo, then they have the combo. There's not much we can do about that. <laughs> Electrolyze us. You got it. Electrolyze is a kind of an outdated one. I, back in the day, I played a Just Guy deck that played four Electrolyzes in the main board. It's the, the list that Sean McLaren won Pro Tour Born of the Gods with. Four electrolyzes. Can you believe it? Nowadays, it's rare to even see a single electrolyze, although it's still occasionally very powerful. Do we go for the pact here? I mean, if they're playing Breach, they clearly don't have the combo just yet. We could go for the pact, but then we wouldn't be able to cast a Titan if we drew it, so let's not. And there's a Titan. Um... If we packed, they probably won't counter it so that we can jam a Titan and we can pay for and we'll have Gruel Turf, this, this, and a land for turn, this upcoming turn, even if we use these two to pay for the Summoner's Pact. So that lines us up for casting Titan two turns in a row. Is that going to be worth it, though? It's a little unclear. I don't want to be too hasty here, but I do get the feeling that we may be on borrowed time here. I think I'm going to go for that line, although that does lose to Blood Moon as well. Ugh, man, I don't want to do it. I changed my mind. I'm going for the Bog them plan and pass. Four, one, two, three, four, five. So we don't actually have a Titan lined up for this upcoming turn. Maybe it should have been the Gruel Turf. We could also still just try to jam a Titan now. Now, nah, let's pass. We can wait just a little bit longer, as long so long as we don't get breach comboed here. Hestermite. Oh, this is Kiki. Okay, this is a deck that is near and dear to my heart. Well, if they have the Kiki, we are just dead here. So that in mind, maybe we should have jammed it. <laughs> and. And they do, in fact, have it. So for those of you who do not know how this combo works, you tap Kiki to make a Pestermite. And the new Pestermite, which has haste, gets to then untap the Kiki. So you do it rinse repeat until you attack for lethal. So this does kill us. All right. So now that we know what their win con is, we can play a little more adequately against it. We want all of the dismembers for sure. Um, engineer explosives at one point in time would have been fine because you could do it on zero and blow it up and it would kill all the tokens because all token copies at one point in time were just innately zero drops but now they retain the mana cost as well so that does not any longer work um, against Kiki they probably do have Blood Moon sadly not really any two ways about it I still don't like Azusa because it also plays into Reman pretty bad 
Gust hits Kiki, but not the actual, like, blue combo pieces, like Deceiver Exarc and Pestermite. So, not really interested in that. Grazer becomes a bit better, though, since it can block Pestermites. So, we might bring that one back. Maybe not that many, though. Although, Kiki can't really deal with a turn two Dryad very easily. So, eh, maybe not. We'll, we'll, we'll do three. That sounds better. Kiki, we still want these cards against, I think. Um, Explore's a little worse against Kiki, actually. And so is Beast Within, unless they have Ashiok or Blood Moon. I might be willing to trim one Beast Within, perhaps, because giving them a 3-3 is playing into their tempo plan. And Bayloth is not particularly good against Kiki, either. We just want to get a, a threat into play, like, specifically Primeval Titan. So I guess that means we can bring back um, a Beast Within. Mm, I think we need to be a little more focused on killing them. Let's try the Azusa. It does die to Bolt, but that'll be fine, I think. Do we want the Sanctuary back? I think it's possible we do. I think we're going to want Sanctuary more than a single Garen Brig. So, let's try this. We're going to need all of our pieces to come together here. Uh, we do want to play first. <laughs> this hand is awful. Doesn't play around Blood Moon at all. No untapped source. Yeah, that's a mulligan. Uh, our Explore just stayed right here, but I will not complain. This hand is better. Is it? I think it is. Yeah, we'll keep it, I guess. Although, I'm not loving it. We'll bottom this Summoner's Pact, and we'll lead off on the Breeding Pool, I guess. Yeah, this hand is not excellent against Kiki, but we'll try it out. It's nice to play against Kiki in, like, a like legit league. All right, we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and get this explorer out there. Force of vigor. Oh, I forgot we still had that one. Um, that's fine, I guess. We'll play ghost quarter and pass it back. Now, if we absolutely had to, we could ghost quarter ourselves. I doubt that they have anything that'll allow them to cast a blood moon this upcoming turn. So. We may not need to worry about that for some time, but Beast Within is interesting as well here. But I still think we want to get this Growth Chamber into play. And we'll pick up the Garenbrig. If they do play a Blood Moon, we'll just force the Vigor it during their turn, pitching this Beast Within and untap and slam a Titan. So if they just play a turn three Blood Moon here thinking that it will get us, it will not, opponent. It will not. All right, all right. Let's float a uh, green, I suppose. Um, do we want to ghost quarter ourselves just in case? I think the upside is just too minimal. And we'll go ahead and force this immediately. Pitching the beast within. Okay. Well, it looks like we might be rolled up with our titan here as well. Do we play around an additional blood moon? Well, now that we have a Rex Sage and we only need to get one basic force in order to do that, this becomes a lot easier. So it's not any consequence at all to pick up a, a single basic force off of our Titan ETB trigger here. And so here is the dude. I'm really glad that we drew that one force of vigor. <laughs> that was quite timely. So what do we get here? We definitely need a basic land because it's possible, if not likely, they have a second blood moon. Um, so let's go with a snow forest, I suppose. The other land is pretty negligible. It, I would think about getting a Tolari West here, but we don't have access to a bounce land. So we might want something like Feel the Dead in case we run out of our Titans here. They could double bolt our Titan, though. In which case, if we draw any bounce land, the Talaria West will do better for us. We also are a ways away from getting Field of Dead active. I mean, I guess if we got Snow Forest, Field of Dead, we would be able to get a zombie immediately off the Sun Home, but we don't have any additional lands to play, so... Let's just go with the Talaria West, I think.
No second Blood Moon. Don't have it, opponent. And they don't have it. All right, all right. That's good news for us. Let's tap it like this so we can leave up our Ghost Quarter. It is still possible for them to Kiki combo us. So that's potentially annoying. I guess we're going to combat. Are they going to tap, draw, bounce, draw, something along those lines? The Seaver Exarch? Okay. Well, that's not great news for us. They would still have to have the Kiki. We could Ghost Quarter them. Um, They probably play exactly one basic mountain. If we Ghost Quarter them in their draw step and they happen to have the mountain in their hand, then that does cut them off of a combo turn. So I think we're going to need to do that. We'll go ahead and get this Sun Home in play. Yep. And we will draw step Ghost Quarter just to make sure that we have as maximum chances as possible to not die here. Looks like they might be casting something here. So we're not dead to the combo. That's nice. This might be a brazen borrower, or the, the bounce side of it to make us pick up our titan, but we naturally have this uh, cavernous holes to punch through that. Hmm. They're drawing two and discarding two. They discard a gust and a bolt. Wow. The bolt I understand, but discarding ether gust is crazy to me. They must have a second one. Pact of Negation. That one is a fine pickup. So yeah. Let's go ahead and swing. And we're probably going to be trying to set up a Dryad here. So when they gust this, inevitably, or cast a Pestermite or whatever, we will say, no thank you, opponent. Unless they have a Force of Negation, we should be good here. Okay. Now we're going to swing. We'll get Valakut and a Bounce Land. Well, that won't actually let us kill Deceiver Exarch. Sadly, we don't play the one fetch land like many lists do. So we can't hold up an instant speed interaction here for their Kiki if they have it. Oh, they also can't actually make that line work because of the fact that they are cut off of red. I guess they could have a Cascade Bluffs, but that's probably fine. So in that case, maybe we get Feel the Dead in a Bounce Land. I still think Valakut plus a Bounce Land is going to be the best here. And let's go with the Valakut line, I suppose. That's fine. And we'll pick up the Talari West. Um, we still lose to a Blood Moon if they have it. Uh, yeah, we just have to go ahead and get this. Well, if we Summoner's Pact, we'll have four, one, two, three, four, five. We'll have only exactly enough, only exactly enough to pay for both packs and therefore lose to a Cryptic. So I'm going to go ahead and transmute for the Summoner's Pact, but I don't think I'm casting it just yet. We'll pass it back. And we'll plan to Summoner's Pact this upcoming turn, I suppose. Well, I guess we're dying to a cryptic anyways because we only have two blue sources, but that's all right. That's all right. They didn't have it anyways. No big deal. Don't worry about it. Okay. Yes. So now we can use the cavern that we saved to force through a dryad instead. So we'll cast a summoner's pact, and they will most likely not counter this unless they have exactly force of negation. And then when they think that they can counter the spell we're about to get, we'll cavern it through. And that should be good. Maybe we should attack with the Titan first before we cast this Dryad, actually. Let's try that. Because if they Cryptic Tap us or do something to otherwise bounce our Titan, then we get to resolve Dryad before playing these two lands and kill the Deceiver Exarch. And if not, we get to Vesuva copy the Valkut. So even this one land drop we're going to get from our Dryad is going to be enough to... Oh, they let us attack? <laughs> well, they can shuffle away our Titan, but 
I think Dryad plus the two Valcuts is going to be more than good enough. Uh, let's get Vesuva copying the Valakut and another. Oh, we don't. Yeah, we do have another Tolari West. So yeah, let's do that. We'll copy our Valakut, and now we can play Cavern naming Nymph or Dryad or whatever. It doesn't really make a difference. Uh, let's tap like this. Play our dude and play our land and be able to kill this to see Regzark. Unless they have something that can bounce our Dryad at instant speed. This should be pretty good. Now they don't have the threat of combo. I mean, we are out of Titans here, but... Oh, this one needs to be always yes as well. Oh, and we have to actually click yes, because that's how it works, apparently. All right, we'll pass back. Maybe we shouldn't be holding on to this Reclamation Sage. Hmm. So, let's see. They do have a Bolt in their graveyard, so it might be a bad idea to attack with the Dryad. Actually, we can use Sun Home to give it Devil Strike so that it doesn't die to a Snap Bolt. So, And we might be fine to go ahead and swing here. If we find another Titan, we'll be in great shape. Although, this upcoming Titan, if we do find one, we'll probably wait to see if we can find a Bounce Land, or a otherwise a way to get this Cavern of Souls in play naming Giant instead. We have him dead in two turns to this Dryad because of our Sun Home Clock, thankfully. So we'll see how this goes. Um, let's tap... This one, and this one, we have all colors in play thanks to our Dryad, so just using the ones that tap for two mana will be prudent so that we don't end up having mana going to waste. Yes. Grazer, and not doing the best job here, but let's go ahead and attack. And we'll see if they have anything to block with. No. All right. Well, we are going to go ahead and sun home this guy. Let's tap like this. And they are on a two-turn clock from our dryad. <laughs> Oh, you know, I passed, but I probably should have played the Reclamation Sage there. That was a punt. I didn't even think about it. I kind of just hit the the button that passes. Every time they Faithless Looting with an Is it Charm, they're going down one card, as far as card advantage is concerned. So this is a very desperation-type move for them. And they had a Cryptic Command, so they could have just bounced this guy, and that gives them an extra turn, so... If they have exactly Redland, Kiki, and a 3-drop, then they can play the 3-drop, untap one of their lands, play their Redland, and then combo kill us. I have to imagine they're putting Cryptic back on top here. Or maybe if they have a Bolt, they're putting a second Lightning Bolt on top. Dark Mage's Charm? Okay. So I... That indicates to me they must have a plan for surviving this upcoming turn. So, something good. Oh, another Dryad's quite good. All right, well, first things first, we'll serve. They might be at the point of chump blocking with a combo creature. No blocks. Okay, well, we're going to make them have something. And if they have nothing, then that will be that. Definitely very bold of them. If they don't have anything to interact with the Dryad, then I admire their their courage. They have Snapcaster Mage. Okay, Aether Gust. Cryptic Command. Probably, probably Aether Gust makes the most sense. 
they can't combo kill us now. I mean, I guess they could if they had exactly, exactly combo creature plus. No, they can't because they don't have the red lands. So yeah, they can't combo kill us. We'll put that guy on top. Sadly, we don't have just a single land here it would kill them. Um, but that is nowhere to be found. So let's play this. Oh wait, hold on. Before we do that, let's go to our second main phase. We'll play this uh, Reclamation Sage. Since they do technically have to kill this. <laughs> and we'll play the Dryad as well. And we know what we're drawing, so there's no reason to play this Arboreal Grazer out. We have two threats that represent lethal on board at the moment. Their Archmage is charming. I guess that is what they put on top, is it not? They need to have Cryptic here to survive, or need to hope that we punt and try to save our Reclamation Sage with Double Strike instead of just hitting them for lethal with a Dryad, which is not something I'm willing to do. So they have the Cryptic. It's just going to be tap Bounce Sanctuary, tap Draw. Okay. Well, we will play another Dryad here. Might as well make it uncounterable. And again, we can't yet die to the combo. Although, unlike the twin combo, they can do it all in one turn with a creature and a Kiki, since Kiki has haste. So we'll just have to see what they what they do here. They draw two cards, okay. They're fighting for dear life. <laughs> All right, opponent, come on. Do you have it? Are you dead? Just show it to us. Don't give us the long wait. You know I'll go for lethal. I don't hold back. I'll send home whatever you don't block. For sure. Come on. Let's just get a land off the top to make this easy. Come on. Land. Land. <laughs> a third dryad is um, interesting. That's not a land. But it doesn't need to be. This might be good enough on its own. If they have another cryptic here, that'll be pretty bad news for us. Eventually, they might be able to start Kiki copying Snapcaster Mage. Pestermite, okay. Well, things are looking bad for us now, because they can just go Redland Kiki. Jeez. Alright, this guy is going to get tapped. We are going to attack with both of these. I guess they can't actually combo, because they have to block both of our creatures. Interestingly enough. Oh, I guess they're holding up a bolt. Well, I'm going to make them have it. They wouldn't be making this play unless they actually had the bolt, so... They do have the bolt. Well, now we're dead to Redland plus Kiki, so... There's not much we can do about it. I guess it's going to be a good thing, maybe, to go ahead and get this Dryad into play. Man, one land would have made this so much easier. I think we're probably going to be dead to the Kiki combo here now, though. Maybe, maybe not. They haven't done anything yet. They're probably thinking about their outs, which means... Because if they had it, they would just play Redland, Kiki, and it would be no question. So they're probably trying to figure out how to sequence their turn here. If they had a Cryptic, they probably would have attacked with the Pestermite. So, ooh, Tracker is not bad. Snapcaster Mage, okay. Prepare 
encrypted command. Okay. Okay. Uh, I guess we go ahead and play Tireless Tracker while their counter magic shields are down. And it, maybe we go ahead and play this Grazer as well so they can't just try to cryptic tap us and get some damage through. This way we can block even their flyer, so. And we'll pass it back. I mean, we're at the mercy of their top deck now. Usually drawing creatures would be a good thing, but. <laughs> I'm really glad that our Ghost Quarter line paid off. Is it possible that they don't play a basic mountain? I suppose if they're trying to support uh, Mystic Sanctuary, that could be possible. Now they have a red land. And they must not have the Kiki. They have Vendillion Click, so they're going to click themselves and try to find Kiki. Okay. It's funny, because if they had tried to click me on my draw step and I had a land, then they couldn't take it and they would just die on the spot. They shuffle a... Well, shuffle. They cycle a Pestermite to the bottom. Okay. I mean, this is what Kiki does. This is, uh, this is playing to their outs. I definitely applaud it. Land. Make it easy. Land. Oh my goodness, that is not a land. All right. <laughs> We're going straight to combat again. Looks like they might have another cryptic here. Nope. Okay. Let's just swing out. If they're blocking with Pestermite, they could still... Let's see, they played two Deceivers, one Pestermite, and they have a Pestermite on the bottom. So they probably play two Pestermites and most likely no more Deceivers, although that is debatable. Since they're not playing Brianborn Cutthroat, then they probably play f three or four Deceivers. So um, they don't have that many more combo creatures left. It's possible they still have them, though. I'm trying to debate, because like if we go for the s double strike on the Dryad here, then we are going to lose our tracker. But I think with the situation being as it is, it's going to be correct to just try to go for a lethal. I mean, if they double bolt this guy... Okay, and they concede. I guess it was right to call the bluff. Man, that was a nail-biting match, too. Against uh, one of my favorite decks of all time, of course, being Kiki, or I guess my one of my favorite decks of all time would be Twin, but that card is no longer legal in the format. Um, anyways, that was a pretty crazy match. My mind feels a little fuzzy after that. <laughs> but yeah, I didn't really get to see the strength of Tireless Tracker, um, but yeah, I mean, that was pretty good. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that and got some entertainment out of it maybe some learning and i mean that's the goal here i will see you for match three this is red face menace signing off